Hey, welcome back to my channel, and it's time to talk about The Last Airbender. Once already ruined with the terrible adaption that I regretfully saw in theaters. My name is Ong. And I'm the Avatar. Now, Netflix has taken a turn at adapting Avatar The Last Airbender, which will be released on February 22nd of this year, and there have been major worrying signs. So recently, Variety reported that Sokka's sexism will be removed from the new live-action show because a lot of moments in the animated show were iffy. Then there is Katara's role, which supposedly doesn't quite translate from the cartoon. And finally, Aang will be a lot more focused in the cartoon character, meaning all the characters are greatly changed. Now, most of the time, I understand removing offensive content, but not when it's important to the story. Avatar The Last Airbender was loved because it took complex concepts such as war, spirituality, propaganda, immigration, abuse, racism, sexism, classism, trauma, and responsibility, and much more, and put them in a fun but tangible form. Before we get into this video today, remember to like, comment, and subscribe below as your support will go a long way. This video is sponsored by my Patreon and will help me push up more videos such as my video on why Miles Morales shouldn't be an MCU, or my review on the Percy Jackson TV show, or that Romeo and Juliet isn't a love story. I have more exciting videos coming out like the story of GTA 6, how to improve Star Wars, how franchises are causing the collapse of cinema, and the morality of superiors. So remember to click the bell to get notifications for when those come out. Anyway, back to the video. So Sokka was a vessel for the lessons, specifically sexism. The whole plot of the Nickelodeon kids show starts when Sokka says, I knew I should have left you home. Leave it to a girl to screw things up. This jump starts the plot as Katara gets rightfully angry and accidentally discovers Aang, the avatar. As the show goes on, we get to know Sokka more. We see that his sexism really is a result of his insecurities around his own masculinity. He really wants to follow in his dad's footsteps, who is a great warrior, and Sokka feels useless as he has no magical powers of his own. Most of the men in his village have left to go off to fight the Fire Nation, and he is left to be the sole protector of the village, being the oldest boy. The northern and southern water tribes in which Sokka is from is a patriarchal society. As he travels the world with the Avatar, he is given clear examples on why that is wrong. From being taught by the Kyoshi warriors how to fight, who are a group of female warriors who are the best fighters in the Earth Kingdom, to Princess Yue being held from love due to the misogynistic traditions of her land, only escaping to make her own decisions when she becomes the moon. That's rough, buddy. The growth is central to not only the character as he grows from his immaturity and realizes the mistakes of his ways, but also vital in teaching the audience the lesson. Sokka, although the hero, is dumb and immature at the beginning, and his sexist views are always showcased as wrong. By ignoring that in the live action remake, you are removing a vital element of the story. If you can't be braver than a kid show, then that's wrong. Currently, there seems to be a renewed wave of sexism and misogyny pushed on the internet, especially to young boys. You are dirt! You make me sick! You're a loser! Characters like Sokka who learn how this is wrong would be a great voice to push back against this movement. Studios need to learn that it is okay for characters to have flaws and to help them to be endearing and to grow. But Netflix was afraid that doing so would make him less likable. Yes, Sokka, one of the most liked characters in the show. A live action remake aimed at a slightly older audience shouldn't suffer from more censorship but less. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Next they announced the changes to Katara. In the show, Katara was the mother of the group, often being responsible in ensuring that everyone stayed focused and on task. Members of Team Avatar often bumped heads with Katara, but it was always shown that she was only looking out for the team's well-being and more than often in the right. Now, Katara's motherly attitudes didn't come from nowhere, but due to trauma from the Fire Nation attack that killed her own mother, being one of the older girls left in the village, she had many responsibilities. Just like with Sokka, she had to take on the motherly role. Yes, the patriarchal nature of the village did have an impact on the role Katara slotted into, but also the traditions that were passed down to her from her mother and other female elders. This tradition guides her character and as she learns to deal with her trauma, she becomes less of a mother figure, although still wise beyond her years. The reason that Netflix gives is that they felt some gender issues didn't quite translate from the cartoon. Again, how can a cartoon aimed at children that had mature themes not be able to translate to a more mature story? Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Finally, Aang is being changed to be a lot more focused on his mission of defeating Fire Lord Ozai. 
This is stupid. I would understand if this was a movie as there isn't the same amount of time to explore characters, but this is a TV show. Like the original, there is time to go in depth. Aang is a child who is tasked with the responsibility of protecting the world that has isolated him from his friends and living life as a kid. He has great power and slowly learns throughout this series to accept that responsibility. Aang starts the series running away from his responsibility that leads to him being frozen in ice for a hundred years and the world suffers for it. Aang isn't able to spend that time learning as he's suspended in animation, so he is still that child with the world on his shoulders. Next, with him being an air nomad, he wouldn't seek out a fight anyways. It's against their teachings. Netflix clearly doesn't understand any of this. Leaves from the vine. Earlier in the production of this series, the original Avatar the Animated Series creators Brian Konetsko and Michael DiMartino left the Netflix series. It was believed it was to form their own Avatar Studios and to create more stories at Nickelodeon instead of retreading old stories. At the time they claimed it was creative differences, which is like always the typical line so I didn't think much of it, but looking into more detail specifically, the two stated they weren't able to control the creative direction of the series. Which seems extra silly because they are literally just remaking the show in live action. But this recent news of censoring a key aspect of Sokka and Katara and changing Aang's character gives a clear understanding where issues between Netflix and the two creators could have arisen. Now, the show isn't out yet and the trailers look fairly good, so I guess we won't know how bad it is until it releases, but I'm now even more skeptical than I was before. Secret Secret the visual effects were the final nail in the coffin for this show for me. I admit, when I saw the first trailer for Avatar, I was hyped. The visuals looked good and I was confident Netflix was better at adapting from animation and cartoons after seeing the work that was done for the One Piece anime. It is clear to see that we are getting a lot closer to the M. Night Shyamalan live action Avatar bending than the cartoon style epic bending we were promised. I mean, look at this clip. <laughs> What is this? This is not what was promised. In the original animation, the creators meticulously created specific bending styles based on various forms of martial arts. The water bending was based on the flowing motions of Tai Chi. The rigidity and strength of earth bending was based on the Hungar form. The dynamic arrow-like forward attacks of Northern Shaolin for fire bending and the light circle walking techniques of Bagua Zhang form for air bending. None of the attention to detail seems to be present as we can see here. The craziest thing to me is that we saw a great example of how bending can be shot in live action. Did no one on the staff watch Shang-Chi? I mean look! This was at least some of what the bending should have looked like, but instead it looks closer to this. Okay, it's not that bad, but still, the same issues arise. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. So for all those reasons, an exciting TV show slowly revealed to be garbage, and I will not be watching. Hopefully, when Avatar Studios releases their projects, we can actually come back to form and peak Avatar content. Anyway, do you agree with me? Do you have your own concerns, or do you trust Netflix? Let me know down below, remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. By the way, if this is good and we do get the full series, I hope we also get to see Zuko find his mom as that was the plan for a possible season 4. Bye.